I'm Mark Halley and Mr. Saltwater Tank, and this is your Friday morning quick tip. Or quick tips is a better way to describe it. This is Friday morning quick tip number 125. Hard to believe that I've done 125 quick tips. So instead of rolling out a new tip, I wanted to go back and see which tips do I use most often. I want to share with you the ones that I found most useful, as well as bring up some ones that people ask me a lot about so I can refresh your memory on some of them. So with that, here's a look at the Friday morning quick tips that I found the most useful for your saltwater tank. And before we get started, grab some popcorn, because we're gonna be here a little longer than 60 seconds. I'm Mark Kelly and Mr. Saltwater Tank, and this is your Friday morning quick tip. Getting a new inhabitants is one of the most enjoyable parts of the saltwater tank hobby. And one way to make sure that your sensitive fish, corals, and invertebrates have a smooth, easy transition into their new home is to drip acclimate them. Now I used to drip acclimate by taking a piece of airline tubing, putting it in my tank, and at the other end, tying the tubing in a knot. Now this drove me crazy because the airline tubing would either fall out of my tank or I couldn't get the right drip rate that I wanted by tying that tubing in a knot. Luckily, Chris wrote in with an idea that's a very easy way to drip acclimate your fish, corals, and invertebrates. How do you do it? It looks like this. Grab yourself a piece of RODI line. You probably have this sitting around your house. Heat up a pot of boiling water on the stove top and then dip in one end of the RODI line. It'll make it soft and supple and you can bend it into a J like you see here. This will make the tubing actually stay on your tank. That's a bonus. Other end of the tubing, put a quick disconnect ball valve here. The ball valve makes it very easy to set the drip rate that you want. And on the other end of the ball valve, just put in as much RODI line as you need to go down into the bucket or bag where your new inhabitant is waiting. Very easy way to make your own drip line for drip acclimating your new inhabitants. Thanks, Chris, for this idea for the Friday morning quick tip. If you want to write in for your idea to potentially have your quick tip, make it on the show. Follow the link at the bottom of your screen. I'm Mark Callahan, Mr. Saltwater Tank, and this is your Friday morning quick tip. A refractometer is one of the best ways to make sure that you're getting accurate salinity readings in your saltwater tank. And from time to time, it needs to be calibrated. And you can either do that with RODI water or with salinity calibration fluid. I read about a guy who was keeping a saltwater tank and he was having lots of death and he couldn't figure out why. His refractometer is reading 1.025. He calibrated it and found out that it was actually 1.033. Very high, no wonder he's having lots of death in his tank. So don't forget to calibrate your refractometer. Thanks Ray for your idea for this Friday morning quick tip. If you wanna write in with your idea for a Friday morning quick tip, have it potentially make it on Mr. Saltwater Tank TV Follow the link at the bottom of your screen. I'm Mark Callahan, Mr. Saltwater Tank, and this is your Friday morning quick tip. Now I know what you're thinking, who is this guy? Well, this is Cam who's traveled all the way down from Canada, hence the shirts. Say hi, Cam. Hey, hosers. How you doing, eh? And what we're gonna to talk to you today about is the difference between a wave maker and a standing wave in your tank. Now a wave maker, like Hydor Smart Wave, creates surge-like action in your tank. This would be one power head on and the other head power head on, or the power heads pulsing together. Now, a wave maker will not create a standing wave in your tank. And a standing wave is? Standing wave is a nice oscillating motion in your tank, and it's created by something like the Tunzi Wave Box or Ecotech Marines Vortec Pumps. So, if you're going to be purchasing a wave maker, make sure you understand you're going to get surge like action in your tank, but not a standing wave. So, I'm Mark Callahan, Mr. Saltwater Tank. This has been your Friday morning quick tip. Till next time, have a good one. Enjoy your tanks, enjoy your weekend, eh? And know your tank personality. Later. I'm Mark Callahan, Mr. Saltwater Tank, and this is your Friday morning quick tip. When you first start up your saltwater tank, about week two or so, you're gonna notice an outbreak of brown algae on the sand and on the rocks. Now, most people freak out. They go, ah, brown algae, what do I do? I gotta get rid of it. Well, here's what you do. Nothing. Don't do it. Mm thing. Let it go. That brown algae is an outbreak of something called diatoms, and it's completely normal. It means that your tank is maturing, and that's a good thing. So if you see that diatom outbreak, don't worry about it, let it go. It'll pass away naturally in a week or two. Just sit back and know that your tank is on the right track. So thanks, Danny, for this Friday morning quick tip. If you wanna leave your idea for a Friday morning quick tip, follow the link at the bottom of the screen. I'm Mark Kelly and Mr. Saltwater Tank, and this is your Friday morning quick tip. One great way to keep your saltwater tank looking great is to only put RODI water in it. And to make sure that the water going into your tank is as clean as possible, every now and then check the TDS of the water in your RODI barrel. All you gotta do is grab a handheld TDS meter like this one, plop it into the water in your barrel, 
make sure that TDS is at zero or as close to zero as possible. Because RODI water is so clean, it will grab up anything that it can. It's like a hungry, hungry hippo at the grocery store. It'd sit there and say, I want that, and I want that, and I want that, and I want that. So RODI water is gonna grab any dust in the air or any residue on the inside of your RODI container. So check the TDS of your RODI container. Make sure that the water in there is as close to zero TDS as possible. And if you see it creeping up, give it a good wash down, get any residue that's in there out. I'm Mark Kelly and Mr. Saltwater Tank. This has been your Friday morning quick tip. Until next time, have a good one, enjoy your tanks, enjoy your weekend, and know your tank personality. I'm Mark Kelly and Mr. Saltwater Tank. This is your Friday morning quick tip. Filter socks are a great way to keep your tank's water clean. They catch any particulates floating around so they can really make your water shine. However, there's a downside to them. Every three to four days, this dirty sock needs to come off and a fresh filter sock needs to come on. Now, here's how you clean your dirty socks because you can actually reuse them a couple times. First, take it off your tank, turn it upside down and rinse it out of the tap water. This will get rid of all your large particles caught in your sock. Then, tie the drawstring in a knot so that it doesn't come undone, take the dirty sock and throw it in your clothes washer. Run the clothes washer on hot with no detergent and once it's done, you got a clean filter sock that you can put back on your tank. And you can reuse the sock a couple dozen times before it's too beat up and you gotta throw it away. Now me personally, I have a drove of about eight filter socks. Some are dirty, some are clean. When the dirty one comes off, the clean one goes on. And when I get enough dirty ones, I do it in the laundry. So, filter socks are good. You have to replace them every three to four days though. I'm Mark Callian, Mr. Saltwater Tank. This has been your Friday morning quick tip. Until next time, enjoy your tanks, enjoy your weekend, and know your tank personality. I'm Mark Kelly and Mr. Saltwater Tank. This is your Friday morning quick tip. It's very likely that your fish love nori. And it's also very likely that you hate it because you put in a sheet of nori, your fish quickly tear it off the algae clip, and then the nori gets stuck in a power head and blown to bits, goes down your overflow, or lands on a piece of coral. So here's how you can feed nori in a way that would keep your fish happy and you happy as well. Grab your nori sheet, put it into your algae clip. Next, grab a pair of scissors and cut little strips into the nori sheet, much like a comb. A couple of strips here like this. Then you can put it in your tank and if your fish tear off a piece of the nori, they're just gonna tear off that one strip and not the whole sheet of nori. Makes it very effective, keeps your fish happy, and of course, makes you happy as well, which is only slightly important. I'm Mark Kelly and Mr. Saltwater Tank. This has been your Friday morning quick tip. Thanks, Scott D., whoever you are, for the tip. And remember, if you want to write in for your idea for the Friday morning quick tip to have it potentially make it on your show, just follow the link at the bottom of the screen. Again, until next time, I'm Mark Kelly and Mr. Saltwater Tank. This has been your Friday morning quick tip. Have a good one. Enjoy your tanks. Enjoy your weekend. And know your tank personality. I'm Mark Kelly and Mr. Saltwater Tank. This is your Friday morning quick tip. One of the most exciting parts about owning a saltwater tank is getting in new fish. And one of the most difficult parts about getting in new fish is getting that fish to eat. So here's what I do that helps my new arrivals start eating quickly. I feed them live brine shrimp. I found that most fish will go after live brine shrimp very quickly, usually within a couple hours of their arrival. And I found even picky eaters like mandarins will usually gobble it right up. The faster that fish is eating, the more comfortable they're going to be. Keep their weight on, keep them healthy to make sure that they have a smooth transition into your home. And of course, all new arrivals should be quarantined in a quarantine tank like this one for at least 30 days to help ensure that you're not introducing any diseases into your tank. Don't do what I used to do, which was skipping the quarantine process. Put yourself at risk for a disease outbreak like I did that brought down my whole system. It's just not worth it. So live brine, when you order that fish online, Add it to your order, or if you're picking it up at your local fish store, ask if they have live brine shrimp. I found it's a great way to help those fish make the transition to their new home. I'm Mark Halley and Mr. Saltwater Tank. This has been your Friday morning quick tip. Till next time, have a good one. Enjoy your tanks, enjoy your weekend. Happy eating, and know your tank personality. <laughs>